Welcome back, Giants fans. So a couple weeks ago, I made a video about Dave Gettleman's entire tenure as a Giants GM and kind of went over how we got here, how things got so bad. And I kind of hinted to you guys, I may make a video about a what-if scenario for the Giants if they went in different directions in the draft, different directions in free agency, didn't sign uh, certain people. So this is a New York Giants what-if scenario from the time Gettleman's been hired from 2018 to present day. If you are a person that does not like hypotheticals and are going to be triggered by it, then don't watch the video. I, that's pretty much all I can tell you. But to me, this is pretty real for the most part. I don't have all pros at every position. I think this is a pretty realistic outcome if the Giants wanted to go in different directions. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. So once again, I make graphics for you guys. We're going to have like a free agency and trade section, then a free agency and trades revised section, then of course the draft. So for free agency and trades here in 2018, Jason Pierre-Paul is not traded for a third round pick and the Giants do not trade for linebacker Alec Ogletree. Nate Solder is not signing for agency. That's an obvious one, right? That's like a free space here. Jonathan Stewart is not signing for agency. Kareem Martin's not signed. Patrick Omame is not signed. And the Giants, the Giants saved nearly $100 million by not signing any of these free agents. So obviously they would have a lot of money at this point. So for the revised free agent moves and trades, tackle Cam Fleming is signed for a one-year deal for around $3 million. He was not signed for much money at that time. So it's a fair offer, of course. Guard slash tackle Justin Pugh is re-signed for five years and 50 million dollars and Justin Pugh is still a solid player when he's healthy he missed half a season with the Cardinals so far but for the most part has been healthy has been productive for the Arizona Cardinals so I'm not saying the Giants missed out a whole lot by letting him go but based on how our offensive line is still not solved four years later keeping Justin Pugh in hindsight may have been the right move safety Trey Boston is signed for two years eight million dollars the Giants brought him in for a visit a couple times I believe he was not signed Trey Boston's a good player in coverage not the best tackler or run stopper but in coverage, he's a good player. Definitely would have been better than Antoine Bethay and Curtis Riley, those type of guys. So let's sign Trey Boston in this scenario. Defensive end, Romeo Quara is not released. I always get triggered by releasing Romeo Quara, so let's keep that guy for once. Edge, Devon Kennard is signed for three years, $20 million. Kennard went to the Lions, had a couple of productive years there. We tried to replace Kennard with um, Connor Barwin and some other guys that weren't good, Kareem Martin. So yeah, that did not work out too well. We'll keep Devon Kennard in this situation. An outside linebacker, Olivier Vernon, is traded for a mid-round pick, get his salary off the books. So now the 2018 draft. This is where things will start to get a little crazy here, but hear me out. So... With the second pick, the Giants, in fact, trade that pick back. We knew the Colts or the Jets, I'm sorry, the Jets wanted to trade up higher for a quarterback, which ended up being Sam Darnold. And the Jets traded up from six to three, gave up a bunch of picks to the Colts. But in this scenario, the Giants are the team getting that pick. Now, we know that Dave Gettleman was too stubborn to pick up the phone and try and trade the second overall pick, although he should have. But in this scenario, the Giants will get the same haul that the Colts got from moving back from three to six. Instead, the Giants will move back from two to six. So in this case, the Giants get the sixth overall pick, 37th overall pick, 49th pick, and a second round pick for 2019, which I believe was like pick 36 or maybe higher. Might have been 33, 34. I don't know. But we'll get to that next year. So the Giants get a haul here for the second overall pick. They still sit at number six. Now you may be saying, why don't you have them taking Quentin Nelson? Well, in this scenario, if the Colts stayed where they were at, which was pick number three overall, then I still have them taking Quentin Nelson. I don't have any evidence that the Colts would have went in a different direction if they stayed at three. So I'm going to have the Colts taking Nelson. So that would leave us on the board with guys like Minka Fitzpatrick, Vita Vea. Saquon may still been there. I have no idea. But I had the Giants taking Roquan Smith, the athletic linebacker from the Chicago Bears. It took him a bit to get adjusted to the NFL for a couple years, but Roquan Smith's finally coming into his own. He's a good player nowadays. So that would have been a fine first round pick. He's a sideline to sideline very good athlete, very fast. So I would have been fine with that pick, honestly. So Roquan Smith is the number six overall pick for the Giants. Could you have argued that Josh Allen, the quarterback, is the pick here? Absolutely. But based on the direction the Giants wanted to go at that time, it was to build around Eli Manning and make the Giants good for 2018. So I kind of had that in mind. We'll keep, Eli, uh, we'll keep Eli Manning in this situation, but we have them take a Roquan Smith, number six overall. Now here's a pick to help Eli Manning, number 34 overall. Instead of Will Hernandez, we have the Giants taking running back Nick 
like Chubb. No surprise there, of course. Chubb has been more durable, much better between the tackles runner than Saquon Barkley. He still breaks off big plays. Saquon's a better receiver, but Nick Chubb has been more healthy and definitely has been more available than Saquon so far in their young NFL careers. This is a pick that was acquired from the Jets in that trade. I had the Giants taking guard. He was a guard in college, but tackle now. Braden Smith, number 37 overall, currently plays right tackle for the Colts. Very good player. Just got a four-year, like $70 million extension with them. So he's a piece to that really good Colts offensive line. So the Giants could have taken him, of course, and helped the offensive line. Now, this might have been a bit of a reach here, but I have the Giants taking edge. Josh Sweat, number 49 overall. He's now with the Philadelphia Eagles. I believe the Giants may have had a pre-draft meeting with Josh Sweat, so he definitely had some interest, so that's kind of why I have him going here. Of course, the Giants needed edge help, and Josh Sweat's a guy that could have helped that, of course, so I have him taking Josh Sweat, number 49 overall. And the Giants draft, uh, Traquan Smith, wide receiver number 63 overall. That's where uh, Lorenzo Carter was taken. We have no other pick. Um, but there was no Jason Pierre-Paul trade, so we don't have the B.J. Hill pick in this scenario. So it's just the Lorenzo Carter pick. But here I have them taken Traquan Smith. The Giants actually met with Traquan Smith before the draft. I tried to include that with some of my picks here. I just don't want to throw the best players on the Giants. It's not going to make this realistic. So Traquan Smith, who the Giants met with, I have him going to the Giants in the third round. And Traquan Smith, he's a fine player. He's not like, you know, he's not tremendous, but ever since Michael Thomas has been out with the Saints, he's missed the past couple of years. Traquan Smith has had to be the wide receiver one. Not really what he is. He's more of a wide receiver two slash three. So I, I feel like Traquan Smith next to Odell Beckham, next to Sterling Shepard in this scenario, would have been a better player. And of course, Sam Beal is not taken in the supplemental draft. So the Giants, of course, in this situation, they get to avoid Saquon Barkley. They get to avoid Nate Solder, Will Hernandez. Like, there's definitely some positives here. Now, I wasn't like a huge fan of taking Roquan Smith number six, but that's definitely a better pick, in my opinion, than what Saquon Barkley ended up being. So I'm fine with that. Obviously, this is more of a year of trying to compete, but trying to rebuild at the same time, whatever the hell the Giants tried to do in 2018. So I kept that in mind here, but... Some things are different, but it will definitely change more as the next few years go on here. So that was 2018, now on to 2019. So by the way, as I'm talking, I'll put the current depth charts of what I'm talking about while I'm talking, if that makes sense. Like for the 2018 depth chart, I was going to put it in there while I'm talking. So this is probably not a good video for the audio listeners. If you're a podcast listener, I appreciate uh, listening to the podcast, but this is probably a much better YouTube version. So I will put the depth charts in as I'm talking now. 2019 free agency slash trades cornerback Eli Apple is still traded to the New Orleans Saints for a 2019 fourth round pick and a seventh round pick, which I think was 2020. Defensive tackle Damon Harrison is still traded to Detroit for a 2019 fifth round pick. Safety Landon Collins is franchise tagged, returns in 2019. Of course, you know, back when this actually happened, Landon Collins was let go. He walked and signed with the Washington football team for like five years and what, $84 million or something crazy. So in this scenario, I have the Giants franchising Landon Collins. It was like an $11.2 million cap hit. So they keep him for another year. Wide receiver Odell Beckham is not traded to the Cleveland Browns. The Giants got a pretty nice haul for Odell. They did not take advantage of it with the picks, but just looking at the 17th pick and who was left, it, like, it wasn't worth it. Like I know I have, you know, of course I have hindsight when saying this, but like if Brian Burns fell another pick and the Giants could have taken Burns at number 17, I probably do trade Odell. But like at number 17, like there was no one that stood out too much. So I'm like, you know what? We might as well just keep Odell and ride it out. So we keep Odell Beckham here. And I always wanted Odell to be a giant for life. So this is probably uh, this is probably how I wanted it to go anyway. So safety Antoine Bethea is not signed for two years and six and a half million dollars. Thank God. Sterling Shepard is not extended through 2023. So we know uh, Shepard signed like a four year around $40 million extension. Couldn't stay healthy, of course. Now he might be cut this offseason, of course. Golden Tate is not signed for four years, $37.5 million. Not much of an explanation there. Marcus Golden is not signed at, um, for edge depth. Now, I could have signed them, of course, but like the Giants had more depth pieces at edge in this scenario. We keep Jason Pierre-Paul. We draft Josh Sweat. We kept Devon Kennard. Like, we don't need to have uh, Marcus Golden here. So, unfortunately, his 10-sack season with the Giants does not happen in this scenario. Kevin Zeitler is not acquired because Olivier Vernon's already gone and Kevin Zeitler was already expensive. So, and we kept Justin Pugh. So, like, there's no point really in having Kevin Zeitler. It could have helped, but I have more answers for the offensive line going forward. Don't worry. So, 
Eric Flowers walks in free agency. His fifth-year option is decline. No shocker there, of course. Could I have tried to put Flowers at guard and make it work? Yes, but I just feel like Flowers kind of overstayed his welcome here in New York, and he kind of got in fights with media. So yeah, Eric Flowers is gone in this scenario. Free agency and trades revise. Center Matt Paredes signs with the Giants. He's a center that came from the Broncos, had a nice career there, went to Carolina, still playing pretty well. So the Giants could have solved their center position. At this time, they had like John Jalapio and that other guy from the, uh, was it Spencer Poli? Was that it? Yeah, Spencer Poli, I think, from the Chargers. Those guys were manning center for the Giants. It was not very good, of course. So Matt Paredes offers some stability. Sure, $10 million per year for a center is not great, but Paredes is a good player, so we'll take that. Inside linebacker, and plus the Giants saved a lot of money by not signing Golden Tate, Nate Solder, so we have the money here. So inside linebacker, Josh Bynes signs with the Giants, just a death piece, linebacker number two. I actually wanted to get him back in 2018, so we get him a year later here in 2019. So tackle Cam Fleming is re-signed for two years, $8 million, so that swing tackle depth is still there. Cam Fleming, as we know, is a serviceable player. He's not great, but also not the worst, you know, definitely not as bad as Nate Solder, so we keep him for a much cheaper contract. And guard Quentin Spain is signed for one year, $3 million. I could not find the left guard here for the Giants, so I said, you know what? We'll sign Quentin Spain as a stopgap left guard. He was fine back in 2019. We'll take that. Now, the 2019 draft revised here, so the Giants are on the clock, number six overall. It's either they take Daniel Jones again and hope it goes better with an improved offensive line, or we wait a year and wait for Justin Herbert. Obviously, I'm taking Justin Herbert. So, outside linebacker Josh Allen is selected number six overall. Even when the draft was going on, I was shocked that he fell to number six, Josh Allen. I figured for sure he was going to the Raiders at number three or four, but they took um, they took Cleveland Farrell, shockingly, at number four, I think it was. So, yeah, that was very surprising. I would have taken Josh Allen there. Still would do that today. So, yeah, Josh Allen's the pick at number six for me. The Giants select wide receiver A.J. Brown, number 34. So now the Giants have the 34th overall pick because of the trade they made with the Jets the year prior. So if they did trade back in 2018, they could have had an extra early second round pick here. And A.J. Brown was still on the board. The Giants had a pre-draft meeting with A.J. Brown. And there was some interest there. The Giants love Ole Miss guys, by the way. Of course, Eli Manning and Evan Ingram. So the Giants love the Ole Miss guys. A.J. Brown could have been the pick at number 34 if they traded back. So now the Giants have Odell, Sterling Shepard, and A.J. Brown. So a great wide receiver trio there. So number 37 overall, I have the Giants taking safety Taylor Rapp. He's a big hitter. He's more of a strong safety. He plays with the Rams now. He's a good player. He actually picked off Daniel Jones twice when we played the Rams this year. So you guys should know who Taylor Rapp is. So the Giants take Taylor Rapp number 37 overall. The Giants in round number three. This would have been Sam Beal's pick, so this was a much better upgrade, of course. The Giants take C.J. Garner-Johnson, Chauncey Garner-Johnson, number 70 overall. Um, now plays with the Saints, plays some slot corner, outside corner, a very good player. He does ruffle some feathers, def definitely talks some trash, but I like those type of players. So Chauncey Garner-Johnson's my pick, number 70. I liked him before the draft, and we missed out on him by like three picks. I think he was taking like number, I don't know, one because Julian Love went picked like 104, and I think that Chauncey Gardner-Johnson went picked like 100. So like we were very close to possibly getting him. I don't know if the Giants had interest, but I definitely did. So I always like CJ Gardner-Johnson, so we make him a Giant here. And the Giants still select Julian Love, number 108. So yeah, I think Chauncey Gardner-Johnson was picked like 104, and Julian Love was picked like 108. So we just missed out on him, which sucked, but I had the Giants taken... Chauncey Garner-Johnson and Julian Love in this draft scenario. So at this point, we still don't have our you know, franchise quarterback of the future. We're going to ride it out with Eli Manning. Um, we'll see how that goes, of course. Now, we made some offensive line improvements with Matt Paredes and, and Braden Smith and keeping Justin Pugh. We have... Uh, Cam Fleming, of course, at left tackle still. So the offensive line is better. It's not great, but it's better. Um, we added some talent on defense, of course. We added Josh Allen, Taylor Rapp, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. We add a stud wide receiver in A.J. Brown, of course, who just broke out with the Titans. So, yeah, I mean, this is uh, it's looking like a good draft, obviously, with hindsight. I have to say that every time, but this team's moving in the right direction. Now, they just need that franchise quarterback and a couple other pieces, and the Giants should be playoff contenders in no time. So now for the 2020 offseason, this is where things start to get a bit crazy here, but now year three, you're supposed to really have your team ready to compete by year three. I mean, most GMs would do that, the good ones at least. So 
2020, here we go. Free agency and trades. Sterling Shepard walks in free agency, signs elsewhere. Don't know where he signs, but not our problem. Safety Landon Collins walks, signs elsewhere. Trey Boston walks, signs elsewhere. Cornerback to Norris Jenkins is released. Quarterback Eli Manning still retires. He gets to finish the year as the full-time starter, not playing 12 games with Daniel Jones in front of him. So Eli Manning finishes out 2019, rides off into the sunset. Outside linebacker Jason Pierre-Paul is released, so we get to save some money there. That's good. Now the Giants still sign James Bradbury, three years, $45 million. I would still do that signing over again. The Giants re-sign Cam Fleming, one year, $3.5 million. They still sign Colt McCoy for one year. They bring in Blake Martinez, three years, $30 million. I'm not going to act like I knew he was going to tear his ACL. So, I mean, it is what it is. I know he gets hurt in 2021 here, but Blake Martinez, the first year with the Giants, was a good player. I still will bring him in in this scenario. And as I mentioned, with Eli Manning, JPP, Jenkins, Collins, Shepard off the books, the Giants have a ton of money to spend here in this 2020 offseason. So the free agency revised and trades revised. Defensive end Romeo Quara is re-signed for two years, $10 million. The guy had a nice career with the Lions, unfortunately, towards Achilles this this year, but he was having a nice couple years with Detroit. So we give Aquara a pretty nice payday. Guard slash center Ted Karras, a guy that I actually wanted back in 2019, but he went back to the Patriots, I believe. So we get him here though for two years, $8 million. Now this is the big one. This is like a big move. I don't know if it would actually happen because it's an in-division trade, but the way I look at it is the Giants would have offered way more than the 49ers here. So if you're Washington, you either, you either take the trade with lesser value or and trade them out of your division or take a trade where the in-division team gives you a lot more. So I don't know how Washington would perceive that, but in this scenario, I have the Giants acquiring left tackle Trent Williams from Washington for a 2020 third round pick, 2020 fifth round pick, and 2021 fifth round pick. So I believe the actual trade for Trent Williams was like just him for like a fifth round pick. It was like nothing. So the 49ers got off with a great deal there. Trent Williams clearly wanted out of Washington. So in this scenario, I have the Giants beating the 49ers offer by a lot. And maybe that would be enough to have the Washington football team trade Williams to the Giants. Could I be wrong about that? Absolutely. But there's no way of knowing. This is all hypothetical. But anyway, I have the Giants getting Trent Williams, franchise left tackles taken care of. I can stop bringing back Cam Fleming every year. So now we have that taken care of. Um, I also have them signing Adrian Phillips. He uh, went to the Patriots recently, former Charger, I believe. He signs here for two years, $10 million, gives them some safety depth. We do have Taylor Rapp, but really nobody else. So Adrian Phillips is a good replacement here to start next to Taylor Rapp. Now for the 2020 draft revised, I put 2019. Sometimes I forget to change the years, but you get it. 2020 draft, I have the Giants taking Justin Herbert number four overall no surprise there of course Dave Gettleman was a big fan of Justin Herbert we know that he finally just waits another year and gets Justin Herbert here in 2020 so the Giants have their franchise quarterback the Giants still select safety Xavier McKinney number 36 overall the third round pick from the Leonard Williams trade was number 68 overall and we had it traded to Washington in the uh, in the Trent Williams trade. So basically, the pick that went to the Jets for Leonard Williams now goes to the uh, to the Washington football team for Trent Williams. It's tough to keep up with, I get it, but still. So now we don't have a third round pick there, but we do select tight end Harrison Bryant, number one, ten overall in the fourth round. He plays with Cleveland, pretty good player, not the best, but would have been fine for a fourth round pick. Fifth round pick was traded to Washington, and I had the Giants taking another Browns player, wide receiver Donovan. P Jones, number 183 out of Michigan. He was a big receiver, had some upside. He's made some plays with the Browns, so taking him in the sixth round would have been a fine pick. So now I have the Giants with their franchise quarterback, franchise left tackle. We're moving. We're in the right direction. The Giants are playoff contenders at this point, and by 2021, they could be Super Bowl contenders. We'll get to that next year, though, on the 2021. So I just looked it up. I think the Washington football team acquired a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick for Trent Williams, so I'm offering them an extra fifth-round pick. Now, is Washington petty and does, does not take the extra fifth-round pick to keep him out of the division once again? Maybe. I have no idea, so I don't know about that. Anyway, so 2021 transactions revised. So this is this past offseason here. No more Kyle Rudolph, 
No more Devontae Booker, no more Dory Jackson, no more Kenny Galladay. I still like a Dory Jackson, but like it's not needed now. We have enough cornerback depth here. Um, running back Nick Chubb is extended for three years, $36.6 million. That's what he recently got with the Browns. It's a pretty fair offer for a running back. I would have done that, honestly. So Nick Chubb is extended. Left tackle Trent Williams needed an extension. Six years, $138 million is what he got from the 49ers. It's a ton of money, but he is by far the best left tackle in football right now. Probably is worth it, in my opinion. So we have our franchise left tackle and a quarterback on a rookie contract. So it's really not that bad. It's kind of like, you look at it this way. It'd be like paying Justin Herbert this contract and having your left tackle on a cheap deal. So it's really not that bad. So Dalvin Tomlinson is re-signed with the Giants for two years. $20 $20 million. Dalvin Tomlinson stays. Outside linebacker Devon Kennard walks in free agency. And running back Wayne Gallman also walks in free agency with his rookie contract being up. So free agency and trades revised. I have Evan Ingram going to the Arizona Cardinals for a fourth round pick. We know the Cardinals were in the tight end market. They traded for Zach Ertz during the season this year. So let's just say we trade Evan Ingram to the Arizona Cardinals this past offseason for a fourth round pick. Tight end Hunter Henry signs with the Giants for three years, $40 million. Am I positive he would take us over the Patriots by just a few extra million dollars? Maybe not, but still, I have Hunter Henry going here. I gave him three and a half extra million dollars, so maybe that would be enough to convince him to come here. Running back Mark Ingram is signed for one year, $3 million, so there's no more. Devontae Booker, give me Mark Ingram. He's a fine backup for Nick Chubb. They're kind of similar body types, so I'll take Mark Ingram there. Cornerback Steven Nelson is signed for one year, $5 million. The former Chief and former Steeler, he's now with the Eagles, playing some good opposite corner from Darius Slay, so we'll take him as our cornerback too for one year and defensive lineman Sheldon Richardson is signed for one year and four million dollars Richardson the former Jet so he has that MetLife experience so he would have been a starting defensive lineman next to Romeo Aquara and Dalvin Tomlinson so the 2021 draft revised here so I'm not going to have the Giants making that bearish trade because that would make the video more boring we don't know what the pick is for next year and all that we don't know how the top picks in the draft for next year are going to turn out so let's just say the Giants stay at number 11 I have them taking Micah Parsons, which kind of hurts me because I loved Micah Parsons. I would have wanted him if the Giants stayed at number 11, but the problem is I don't see the Giants. I don't think they would have taken Micah Parsons because of the off-field issues and the maturity issues. Like, of course, there was some reports coming out about some bad stuff he may have done at Penn State. So I think Micah Parsons was not a guy that Giants were too into. And you could also argue that if the Washington football team did not make the Trent Williams trade with us, we could have taken Rashawn Slater here. So that's definitely possible as well. But in this scenario with Trent Williams, on the Giants. I had the Giants taking Micah Parsons. They get the stud linebacker out of Penn State. So that's the number 11 pick. For number 50, we still trade back with the Dolphins in round two. I like that trade. We're going to take Aziz Ojolari, still outside linebacker, number 50 overall. For the third round, we take Ben Cleveland Guard, who now is with the Baltimore Ravens. I like Aaron Robinson, but we haven't seen much out of him. We haven't seen much out of Cleveland either, but as I said, we have cornerback depth. We don't have much offensive line depth in this scenario, so we'll take Ben Cleveland there, number 71 overall, the left guard. The Giants select running back Ramondre Stevenson, number uh, 116 overall. He's now with the Patriots, having a very good rookie season behind Damian Harris, kind of splitting time with him now. He's been impressive, and the Giants select Marco Wilson, number 136 overall from the Evan Ingram trade. So the Cardinals actually took Marco Wilson in the fourth round with this pick, but I actually liked Marco Wilson a lot coming out of Florida. He's had a pretty good rookie year so far. There were some off-field concerns, but he's fine. So Marco Wilson would have been the pick here, number 136 overall. So now with all this in, in place, the Giants roster is in a very good place. Now I made a final graphic for you guys to show what the current depth chart would look like if we made all these moves, and let's get on to that now. So what would the Giants' current depth chart look like if all these moves happened today? So let's answer that question. So Offensively, quarterback is Justin Herbert, backed up by Colt McCoy. That's obviously a very solid group. Justin Herbert's one of the most talented quarterbacks in football. You may not think he's a superstar yet, but he'll probably be there one day, so he's trending in that direction. The running back room is Nick Chubb, Mark Ingram, and uh, Ramondre Stevenson. I like that group a lot, honestly. Really good running backs there. Mark Ingram, not so much anymore, but as for Stevenson and Chubb, I like those guys a lot. Wide receiver Odell Beckham still here. A.J. Brown. Awesome one-two punch there. Traquan Smith and Donovan Peoples-Jones. So wide receiver three, wide receiver four. 
not excellent, but they're fine. So that wide receiver group with Odell and A.J. Brown, if they stayed healthy, obviously that's a very good group there, of course. Tight end is Hunter Henry and Harrison Bryant. So, you know, not the best blocking tight ends, but definitely some good receiving tight ends, really good red zone threats. That would definitely help the tight end group uh, over there. So offensive line now, which of course is a big question with Giants fans. Who's the offensive line going to be? We got Trent Williams, left tackle, as I mentioned, probably the best left tackle in football right now. Left guard, Ted Karras, backed up by Ben Cleveland. Matt Paredes is still the center. Justin Pugh still at right guard and Braden Smith at right tackle. So that's a very solid offensive line. It's probably a top five unit in football. So if you had that, plus the weapons of, you know, Nick Chubb and Odell and AJ Brown, Justin Herbert throwing the ball. I mean, this offense would have been crazy. I don't even know if Jason Garrett could have held this offense back, honestly. So this would have been an awesome offensive team here. And as for defense, it's not that bad either. So defensive line, Dalvin Tomlinson at nose tackle. You have Romeo Quara, Sheldon Richardson at defensive end. For the edge spots, you have Josh Allen, who's a very good pass rusher, of course, with the Jaguars. You got Josh Sweat. You got Aziz Ojalara as your rotational guy. The rookie, not a bad pick there. Inside linebackers completely stacked. Roquan Smith, Micah Parsons, Blake Martinez. That would have been the best linebacking group in football by a very good amount there, of course. Cornerback is James Bradbury, Chauncey Garner Johnson playing in the slot mostly, Steven Nelson, and Julian Love as a death piece. I like that group there. Pretty solid group. Safeties are Taylor Rapp, Adrian Phillips, Xavier McKinney, and your special teamer is Darian Thompson. So that would be the Giants roster. Now, how many wins does this team get if they're healthy? you can argue like 11 or 12. This is a very freaking good team. It would depend on coaching. If Joe Judge and Jason Garrett were still the coaches with this team, they might take off a couple wins. Maybe it's a 9 or 10 win team, but still, this would be a very good football team if it happened. Obviously, I have the luxury of looking back in time and seeing which guys worked out and which guys did not work out. So the whole video is kind of worthless if you look at it that way, but it also shows you how different things could have been if the Giants went in a different direction in the past three or four years, which is pretty unfortunate because I love this team a lot. So that's the bad part. Anyway, hopefully the Giants do figure it out and, and the next four years for us in reality could be much better. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I mean, once again, I know not everybody loves hypotheticals, but I feel like this kept it real. This was not too crazy. As I mentioned, not every single player on this roster is an all pro player. This is pretty realistic for the most part. So that's all I got. Um, I didn't do a preview for the Bears game. I mean, let's be honest, what's there to talk about at this point? It's two very bad football teams. The game is mostly for draft position. The Giants have one healthy wide receiver right now, I saw. So Kenny Galladay is the only healthy wide receiver we have right now. I saw Andy Dalton is starting for the Bears, which I guess kind of helps the Giants if they want to win. So that's, I guess, good or bad news if you want to win or lose. I don't know. But yeah, I expect the Giants to lose still, not by a lot. But yeah, I, I don't know who I want to win anyways. I don't know. I guess give me the Bears because I, I just want to see Joe Judge fired still. So I'll, I'll take a Bears victory. I just don't think they have the firepower to blow us out. But I could be wrong. So we'll see. Anyway, that'll do it for the What If video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll talk to you guys next time.